All right, thanks for staying with us now. National Asian and Pacific Islander um, HIV slash AIDS Day, Awareness Day, was first observed on May 19th in the United States. It is um, a yearly celebration mm -hmm. um, uh, aimed to raise awareness about HIV, AIDS in Asia and the Pacific Islands, right? Mm -hmm. um, those communities. Now, this day helps to prevent HIV and also helps um, those who are currently Leaving with HIV, break the silence and remove some of the stigma attached to um, HIV AIDS um, in the Asian and Pacific Islanders community. Um, how much do we even pay attention to AIDS these days? Isn't there like a World HIV Day as well? I know there's a World. It's, um, it's actually December 1st. Because, uh -huh. you know, we launched Waze on December yes, 1st. I and remember. We, were, we yes. had that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. So I can't forget that um, day. So this, yeah. is, this one is specific to, to Asian region. and the, yeah. yes, the region, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. I think they should actually have a, a Nigerian AIDS day. But because people don't pay attention. I remember when I was, uh, I think it was when I was in university, that the AIDS, mm. you know, and all of that, they would put so much scare in you. Don't go to the salon. Let them not go and use razor to yeah. cut you, this, yeah. you know. But yeah. I don't yeah. see any of those awareness going on. Is it that well, the disease is no longer there or what is no, it? No, so I think it's the awareness. If you sort of think about the buzz, not even the buzz. The buzz is the wrong word. I apologize. If you think about the impact of COVID when it first came, we didn't know what it was. We were locked up in our houses. Um, I mean, we just didn't know what to expect because it was new. We had the same thing when HIV first happened. And people were like, don't share my cup. There's all of that, you know, panic and all the same. So with something that's new, Today, nobody's talking about COVID, but people are still getting COVID in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like anything that's new. When it's new, there's a whole lot of noise and buzz around it and, and, and information and trying to drive awareness, trying to get top of mind. Um, is there a test for it? Is there, are there drugs for it? I mean, I know that right now HIV can't be cured, but then they've got retroviral drugs. People who have HIV um, are able to re lead rich lives. I, I remember the most impactful conversation that I had. We once had, in one of my past um, um, employments, uh, we had a talk very similar to what we did the first day on Waze. You know, the lady was talking, and we didn't know for the longest time that you know, she was HIV positive. And this lady came into us at work. We all sat down, and she talked about HIV, really you know, gave us a rich talk about it. And she was pregnant at the time. So she just, we just felt she was like a specialist and an expert. She got to the end of the talk. Before she said she had... And then she says, this, and we're like, huh? What now? And yeah, she was. So she was like, she's HIV positive. She married her husband while she was HIV positive. He wasn't. She keeps her viral load really low. So that's why they're able to, you know, have a baby. Um, so it, it's become something that's manageable. Now, it is important that people still understand and are aware of it because, again, it is still out there. It's still deadly. It still doesn't have a cure. Um, and it's still being spread. I think Nigeria, if I remember correctly, has one of the highest numbers. I think we're sixth highest in the world, if I, if I remember correctly, but I may be wrong, forgive me. But um, we have high numbers of HIV here in Nigeria. So I agree with you that maybe we have to have a Nigeria HIV day to, to continue to raise awareness. But even without that day, um, a lot more work should be done to raise awareness. People need to keep it at the top of their minds. Um, because it is still quite dangerous, like Absolutely. I said. I mean, if, at least if you find out early and you can get on retrovirals, you can live a, like a full rich life. Um, but if you don't, then you know, it just goes from HIV to full-blown AIDS, and then you find out. Absolutely. And that's, that's not good. All right, so what did you find for us in the news? So, uh, my news story, uh, I love the gender part of it. That's why I picked it up. <laughs> my headline says, oh, Just in, you. Buhari appoints Twingy Madeni as Accountant General. So um, she has been appointed as the Substantive Accountant General of the Federation. This was announced, um, this was announced uh, in a statement which was signed by the Director of Communications, Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Mohammed Abdullahi Ahmed, on Friday in Abuja. Um, so she is 
up until this appointment, she was the Director of Finance and Accounts in the Office of the Head of the Civil Service, went through a rigorous vetting process. Um, I think it, it had earlier been reported that about 20 directors drawn from different ministries, departments and M um, agencies, MDAs, um, had been vetted to take part in this process leading to the filling of the vacancy. So she's gone through that rigor and she's come out on top. So congratulations to her. I love to see women being put into top positions. Um, it only just goes to show that we continue to break, break boundaries um, and break barriers. So congratulations to her. Congratulations We're to, hear great things to her. I was just going to ask, this tenure that she's going to run, right? Mm -hmm. does, it, does it expire with the outgoing president? Because I don't understand why um, um, she's been appointed just a few days to his exit. So does it, well, I mean, how does that There's, there's something to be said for dotting your I's and crossing your T's before you leave office. I mean, we've, we've talked about some of the more... Um, interesting things that he's trying to do, 800 million. <laughs> Remember that conversation? <laughs> oh, I think th that has been withdrawn. So, um, no, I'm just saying that, of mm -hmm. course, he's trying to do different things. So um, I don't have a question to the uh, answer to the question that you asked. Yeah, I need uh, to about even find out. Like, we, we need to know if, so mm. for instance, like the CBN governor is not really affected by, you know, he has a four-year tenure, right? Yeah. But he can be sacked He or can whatever. be, yeah. yeah. So if I think most of these roles kind of have tenures like that, yeah. but I'm not, I, I don't have that information For this particular one, general, because yeah. I don't understand how many days <laughs> it is where. Well, I mean, it's the same thing, though. When you're going to do a handover, you like to tidy up. It's like if you're going to, you know, mm. you tidy up. You don't mm. want to leave a messy house. So Absolutely. he's trying to tidy I get up. You. I get you. All right, so my story is actually um, very interesting in the spirit of going to court. Um, founder, I just saw it, I just said, you know what, <laughs> let me take a few good story today. So the founder of, um, uh, what is the name of his church now, um, Omega Fire Ministries International, Come that's on. Apostle Suleiman <laughs> Johnson, has challenged the Nollywood actress um, Halima Abubakar to subject her allegations against him to trial in court. Okay. You know, in the spirit what of both of allegations. So the allegations, well, the clergy who spoke through his lawyer mm -hmm. um, said the actress should subject all the purported claims against him to do judicial scrutiny um, by filing a defense um, to a one billion damage suit filed against her. Because I think he, he had um, filed against her. He says, so um, he said that uh, his client was unjustly attacked, maligned, and defamed. Mm -hmm. by the actress uh, with the intention to blackmail him for monetary mm -hmm. gains. He assured that um, the clergyman would secure justice in court over the defamation of his character by the actress. Um, she, she had also alleged, right, the actress had alleged that the pastor had been uh, having an affair with her mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and that affair has led to her becoming extremely ill. I mean, if you mm -hmm. see her current state, mm -hmm. is really, really, really gory to see. She also alleged that the pastor was having intercourse with her while she was, you know, bleeding. And she was um, three times pregnant for him. Each time, um, she lost the pregnancy each time. Um, so that's what she, I mean, they, if you follow Apostle Suleiman and his... Um, I was just going to say that. Isn't he the pastor who's had lots of people claiming this kind of stuff? Absolutely. There was one time okay. they claimed Yabo Ajo. They have, they've, they've like linked him to so many Nollywood mm. um, actresses and all of that. But it, it, it was the headline the that caught my attention. Right? Right? <laughs> just fishing in shallow Right? He's just fishing in shallow Like, it was the headline that caught my attention where he said, go mm. to court, right? And go and whatever. Like, you see, this is our Nigeria. It's like, you know, you clearly know that the system, you know, yep. can, can work against you. So it's quite easy and so e um, quick for you to say, go well, to court. I mean, you know? allegations are allegations until they're proven. Well, so yeah, I guess and there's no saying, emotions with the law. Yeah, in saying go to court, I hope that she has evidence. Um, I don't want to say that there's no smoke without fire, but too many times his name has come up. Every time. But, um, yeah, we'll see what comes out from Absolutely, court. Absolutely, from court. So mm. there's a one billion lawsuit against that, so she has to go to court. And she, ha wow. I hope she has the evidence as well. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from the break, we'll delve into our conversation for the evening. Stay with us. We'll be right back.